Hi, this is Dragonfly. In case if you're wondering where I was for the past week, it's the end of fiscal year for the company I work for, so there's a lot of things that needs to be done, all crammed into the end of March, early April. And also, for this upcoming April anime season, although there are quite a few good shows, none of which I feel like people are gonna have a hard time understanding without a cultural context. So, in terms of following currently on air shows, I don't think I'm gonna be that helpful, to be honest, over a lot of these. However, there's one particular show that's scheduled for July 2024 this year that I feel like needs a bit of background building in order for people to even be interested and actually enjoy. So, the official English translation of this upcoming anime is called The Elusive Samurai. Original Japanese title though is called Nige Jozu no Wagagimi, which translates to The Young Lord is Good at Escaping. And the original manga is done by Matsui Yusei, who also was the manga artist behind Assassination Classroom. So in terms of source material for this anime, there's some solid work. However, this show kind of deals with the topic of samurai in a more or less a stereotypical kind of way. So in order to understand this show and the things leading up to this show, we kind of have to understand the stereotypical assumption of a samurai and more or less the actual samurai in reality or just how the Japanese actually perceived samurai. To do that, I'd recommend another animated show that aired in 2011 called Hyogemono, and that's actually our topic today. Now, the word samurai, when you hear that word, what kind of image does it come up in your mind? More than likely, it's gonna be like a stereotypical image of a elitely trained warrior trained throughout their life with superhuman fighting ability, wielding a katana, basically yelling honor all the time, and has a death wish, and would sooner commit suicide than anything else. I mean, with all stereotypes, it came from somewhere in reality, and the image of samurai is no exception. And it's also been perpetuated by both things like Japanese work of fiction, such as Kurosawa Akira films back in the 1970s, also basically pre-World War II and during World War II propaganda depiction, and a lot of Japanologists, like Western Japanologists, will perpetuate this image as well. You'd think that with the advent of internet, people will know a little bit more and be less prone to stereotyping, yet a lot of these stereotypes are hard to get rid of. For example, the recently popular show Shogun is a pretty good show with a good ba budget and well-acted actors, although it's based on a novel written by a Western Japanologist, based on the life of a British sailor who ended up in Japan. In that show, all you get is basically the stereotypical depiction of samurai as an honor-touting, katana-wielding, superhuman fighting machines, once again. So that's a bit of an unfortunate event, but it doesn't take away from the show, it's still an awesome show, we just have to keep in mind that is actually a stereotypical image of a samurai. Now the Japanese are more than happy to actually indulge in the stereotypical depiction of the samurai. I mean, they were the first ones to actually portray them in that way. However, the difference between them and more or less a Western audience is that, at least on the back of their mind, they kind of knew that this kind of stereotypical depiction probably wasn't reality, whereas more or less Western audience tend to take their word wholeheartedly for it, and they only think of the stereotype. So, case in point, Hyogemono. Hyogemono is an anime adopted from another manga based on the life of a Furuta Oribe, also known as Furuta Shiginali. The Oribe is his court title where Shiginali is actually his name. He's a samurai from the 16th century in Japan, essentially the Sengoku period, which is quite literally the most quintessential era for the samurai. Yet, in this era, all the samurais you meet tend to essentially submit all the stereotypes you have about samurai. 
Without the talk of honor and loyalty, samurai in this period will either regularly betray their lord, flee from battle, and a lot of them weren't even that good at fighting. Some of them can barely use the typical weapon of a samurai, which, despite the stereotyped image, wasn't really a katana. Katana were more or less a sidearm, whereas usually when they went into battle, they'd choose something longer ranged, such as bow and arrow or a spear. And when people were getting close enough, then they'd actually use their katana. And there were samurais who weren't even good at that. They were good at neither, like bow and arrow or spears or katana. Yet, they were great strategists. So, in terms of the definition of a samurai, they weren't seen as a bad one, even though they had no fighting skills whatsoever. And it's worth mentioning another stereotype about the samurai, thinking that uh, they would think that ranged weapons are for cowards, real men fight mono a mono in close quarter combat. That's far from reality, perpetuated once again by another film, The Last Samurai, where you've seen this holdout of Last Samurai who would, despite literally using firearms. Whereas in reality, when firearms first showed up, around the same time as 16th century in Japan from uh, European traders, Japanese samurais picked it up very fast. They weren't really hesitating in using this and thinking this was a weapon for the cowards. They were thinking, whoa, what an effective way of disposal of enemies. So with all of that said, our main character in this show, Hyogemono, has nothing to do with even, like, strategizing. He's barely a good enough fighter, not really good in terms of fighting skills nor strategizing, yet in terms of influence over Japanese culture in the long run, and in terms of being a famous enough samurai, he beats out so many people who are probably much better than him in all those stereotypical things you'd associate with samurais. So how was he so influential was that he was a master of tea ceremony. And in this period, where you had regional lords fighting against one another, tea ceremony was used as a way of establishing a diplomatic tie and coming up with a diplomatic agreement. And for his ability to host tea ceremonies and actually procure and use tea wares, he was actually much more influential in that aspect, even though Arguably, he wasn't really known for any kind of fighting skills, nor loyalty, nor strategizing, nor whatever. But because of this subversion to your stereotype about what a samurai should be, this anime should be an interesting enough introduction to another aspect of samurai that usually people don't really associate. And essentially, this show called Hyogemono is adopted from a manga of the same name, which basically depicted Furuta Shigenali's entire life story from the first time he actually made into historic records to when he actually died. Now that was a manga. The anime only basically covered the first half of his life, but for all its worth, it actually ended in a period where it felt like a decent enough end without having to go through later half of his life and how he died. So watching this, you wouldn't feel like uh, it's incomplete or you feel like it hasn't finished or anything. It felt like a satisfactory enough conclusion to the story of this individual. Now keep in mind, as a historic anime combined with a comedy, this show is not your typical style of anime. Animation style might turn some people off over how wacky it can be sometimes. Storyline essentially follows a Japanese historic drama kind of setup, rather than the average shonen battle anime you see. And since this dealt with more or less adult subject matters about war, conquest, diplomatic relationships, and so on, there are some adults only leasing, so definitely not for kids. But if you're an adult, if you're interested in seeing other aspects of Samurai to basically take away from this entrenched stereotype and also preparing for this new upcoming anime in July, which I'd argue, in a different kind of way, also showcases Samurai that basically subverts people's stereotype. Then you could give this a watch. In the meantime, it's wacky, it's fun, it introduces you to Japanese tea ceremony, it also introduces you to the Sengoku period in Japan which basically 
there's many, many other animes based on the same period. It could be your literal gateway drug to a whole genre of anime that tends to be overlooked from time to time in the West over how tightly knit these animes are with historical events. Just as people were interested enough to actually watch Napoleon the movie, I think people should be able to enjoy historic animes about Japan a little bit more, especially when since you have a stereotyped image of what a Japanese samurai would be, this will take away a little bit and bring you to some kind of understanding that's a little bit closer to what the Japanese would assume. They kind of knew that uh, there were people that were different. So if you're ready to be entertained over this historic drama roll together with a comedy, then go ahead and give this a watch. It's called Hyogemono, and you can look it up online while you're at it and prepare for the new show in July. In the meantime, I'll try to do a few more introductions and hopefully give you a better understanding going into this show in July.